Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is gonna be on estrogen dominance and poor liver detoxification. We're gonna dive in and talk about those issues. Again, estrogen dominance, that's that ratio to progesterone to estrogen, and when that ratio starts to skew, estrogen dominance occurs naturally, and that can leave symptoms such as breast tenderness, mood issues, cramping, uh, excessive menstruation, back pain, a lot of those PMS symptoms, and we'll talk all about it today. Before we do, make sure you smash that like button, put your comments down below, let me know about your experience with estrogen dominance, what you've done and what's helped and what's worked. All right, let's dive in. So what is estrogen dominance? We have this natural ratio of estrogen to progesterone. On average, it's about 22, 23 times more progesterone than estrogen. So you have progesterone here, estrogen here. So you actually don't necessarily have more estrogen than progesterone when we have estrogen dominance. It means that ratio drops. So if progesterone is 22, 23 times more than estrogen, just the fact that we're now at 15 or 10 to one, that's a sign of estrogen dominance as well. So we have to look at you know, that general ratio. A lot of times on the labs, they'll give you like a reference range. And so for instance, if we have progesterone in the top 25% of the reference range, and estrogen in the top 25% of the reference range, we're probably okay, right? But let's say we see progesterone in the bottom 25% and estrogen in the top 25%. Well, now we don't have parity. So I like to look at parity within the reference range for each of the hormones. That's number one. Number two is I'll look at all of the individual estrogens. I'll look at estrone or E1. I'll look at estradiol, E2. That's the major estrogen that's gonna predominate when you're a cycling female. And then estriol is E3, and that's going to predominate more when you are menopausal. So your body will take DHEA, convert some of that over to estriol. That's a weaker estrogen. Estradiol is a stronger estrogen. Estrone is a is a strong estrogen, but it's at lower amounts. So we'll look at the, the various estrogens. We'll look at progesterone, and then we'll look at the 2-methoxy-2-hydroxy estrogen. This is a estrogen metabolism marker. And if this, we see it in the bottom 25% of the range, right, on the lower side. And so, for instance, when we look at the 2-methoxy, when we look at the estrogen metabolites, I want like, you know, about a, a one-to-one -one ratio. If we have two or three units of estrogen, I want to see at least two units cleared out on the detoxification side. When we start to see the skew, we start to see the 2-methoxy, two 2-hydroxy two estrogen numbers drop in comparative to the 2-hydroxy to the two estrogen going down that detoxification pathway, that starts to tell me we're having some estrogen clearance issues. Now on the Dutch Complete panel, there'll be a little gauge on there that'll be very helpful and that gauge will tell me where we sit. And so when we go into that bottom 25% on the detoxification side, that's a problem. I like to be in the least middle-ish, but that bottom 25% tells me we may have some problems there. Now if we have poor estrogen detoxification, what does that mean? So the first thing I always look at is let's not overload the system with estrogen. Let's make sure we're not drinking out of plastic bottles. You know, foods are organic. We're not getting a lot of xenoestrogens or foreign estrogens from pesticides. We are not um, consuming meat that has a whole bunch of hormones in it, estrogens in it, dairy with hormones in it. So we're avoiding the hormones in our food, right? Dairy and, and meat with those typical hormones. We're gonna do organic foods. We're gonna do pesticide free, so we're not getting the estrogens from the pesticides, and then we're not getting the estrogens from the plastics. So plastics, pesticides, uh, meats, and dairy are the big vectors for hormones. Um, the next one would be ensuring that we're eating enough cruciferous vegetables and we're digesting our proteins well. Because a lot of the proteins, the sulfur-rich amino acids actually help run our phase one and primarily phase two detoxification pathways. We need good sulfur amino acids, cysteine, glutamine, glycine, right? All these good amino acids. And then a lot of the sulfur compounds like the diendol methane, these sulfur-rich sulforaphane compounds, they actually help with estrogen metabolism too. So when I see patients, we'll look at, um, these estrogen markers, right? We'll look at the estrogen levels. We'll look at the 2-methoxy, 2-hydroxy estrogen. Uh, we'll also look at the gut. There's an important marker in the gut called beta-glucuronidase. Now, beta-glucuronidase goes up when there's a lot of bad bacteria, SIBO or bad bacterial overgrowth. Beta-glucuronidase tells us there's bad bacteria, but it also has an effect on detoxifying hormones. So it's an enzyme that will take a hormone that's conjugated, meaning it's bound to an estrogen, it's getting escorted out of the body, and it will deconjugate, it'll break off that protein that's gonna help escort out of the body, 
and it's going to basically allow it to go back into general circulation. And that's a concern. So if our body is sequestering different hormones and is escorting them out of the body, and we have this bad bacterial enzyme coming in there and breaking it free and letting it go back into the body, that can affect our hormones. So gut health can affect our hormones. beta glucuronidase can. Now to fix that, we actually have to work on gut bacterial overgrowth and supporting detoxification. So we may deal with gut to actually help with detox. Also, if we have poor digestion, we need good digestion to be able to absorb the amino acids and the sulfur compounds. So on the functional medicine side, we'll use things like methane. We'll use things like calcium to glucurate. We'll use things like sulfur amino acids and glutathione. In my line, I use something called liver supreme, which actually has a lot of liver gallbladder support to help conjugate and get those hormones out from the gallbladder into the intestines. And then we'll also do the different binders like activated charcoal, or we'll do uh, a product called Detox Aminos, which has calcium to glucurate, it has cysteine, it has taurine, glycine, it has all of the amino acids to run phase two detoxification. So you got to support phase one, liver gallbladder, right? Got to support phase two. These are sulfur-rich amino acids. We may add in extra sulfur, whether it's calcium, whether it's a diendol methane, um, my calcium to glucurate is already in the detox amino, so that's helpful for binding it up. And you can also do like an additional binder, like a activated charcoal or a bentonite clay to help bind it up, or a really good citrus pectin kind of soluble fiber to kind of bind it up. That helps so we can bind it. So calcium to glucurate binds it, DIM binds it, um, sulfur amino acids will conjugate it as well. And if we have bad bacteria, that beta glucuronidase would kind of open it up and let it go free. So if we actually have a binder there, that can help us to sequester it and give the stool a better chance of carrying it out into the toilet. So when we look at our estrogens, we got to see detoxification. We got to look at um, our estrogen levels, and then we got to look at the detoxification. So I mentioned the 2-methoxy, 2-hydroxyestrogen. I mentioned um, we can also look at glutathione levels, right? We can look at pyroglutamate or sulfate on the organic acids, which are very helpful. And then we can give all the different things I mentioned to help bind it up. Calcium to glucurate. We could do activated charcoal. We could do a really high quality plant-based soluble fiber. And then we do our phase one, our phase two support, right? Phase one supporting liver, gallbladder flow. And we're supporting good B vitamins, good taurine, good, good things to help gallbladder flow to take those toxins and make them fat soluble to water soluble. And then phase two, we're working on the sulfur aminos. We're going to do the calcium to glucurate to bind it. We're going to do all the sulfur amino acids as well. And then of course, we're trying to make all those diet and lifestyle changes. So we're not getting hormones for your food, water, pesticides, or animal products or dairy. And then of course, we want to fix the underlying gut issues. If we have underlying gut issues, we have to fix that it could be a bacterial overgrowth, it could be a parasitic infection, it could be a yeast infection that's preventing us from absorbing a lot of those nutrients. So you got to you gotta look one step above, not at the symptoms down below, but you have to look at the gut, the hormones, the detoxification, and you have to look at the lifestyle parameters that could have caused that to go out of balance to begin with. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have a hormonal issue or estrogen dominant symptoms and you want to dive in deeper, click down below. There's a link where you can schedule with myself and my colleagues. I'm available worldwide for health care support. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you click the thumbs up button and subscribe so you get great content coming your way. Really appreciate it. Put your comments down below and let me know what you think, y'all. All right, let's see if I have any questions here. What do we got? I'm going to skip questions that aren't relevant to, to today's talk. Uh, what do you think the main reasons for adult acne? I'm a 35-year-old male. So for a man, first thing I would do is make sure food is dialed in. Paleo template, low carb, get insulin under control, cut out all food allergens, see how that goes. Is estrogen-progesterone ratio always the same for balance or do the ratios change depending on where you're at in the cycle? Yeah, that's more of an average. Um, so like when you're when you are like in the heart of the luteal phase, it could be 300 to 1 with progesterone because your progesterone could be like 2, 250, 300 and your estrogen could be really low. So that's a general average, but it's going to be way higher when you're in the heart of the luteal phase. Great question. I would feel somewhat blacked out and dizzy, see stars when I stand up quickly from ducking or a crouch crouching down. What's happening and what should I do to address this? Great question. So when that's happening, when you're bending over and like standing up fast, 
it's usually an adrenal issue. Usually you have poor mineral corticoid function from the adrenals and that affects minerals and minerals hold on to fluid and a fluid then increases blood pressure. So if we don't have adequate blood pressure and we change body positions fast, what's happening is we can't perfuse up to the brain fast enough. So our brain momentarily goes without a little bit of oxygen and fuel and you feel a little bit of that blackout. That's because of usually adrenals and minerals. So I would work on looking at the adrenal function Work with a good functional medicine doc. Add some good minerals to your water. Half a teaspoon of Redmond's Real Salt twice a day and salt your food liberally. That'll help. Eric writes in, what helps deactivate hormones or is it mainly out of balancing them? Um, so it depends. If we're talking high amounts of estrogen, you have to get to the root causes of why that was there, number one. Um, part of the reason why hormone imbalance happens because of women is because of poor diet, lifestyle, and then obviously stress that skews the... Um, the progesterone estrogen ratio because progesterone will go downstream to make your cortisol. So when you're stressed, you'll lower progesterone that way. And then when you're stressed and you're not eating good, you don't have the nutrients to run your detoxification pathways. Therefore, you don't have the optimal detoxification. So things can go out of balance like that. And just by having poor gut function, you can obviously um, have bad bacteria. And that bad bacteria throws off that beta glucuronidase, which makes it harder to metabolize estrogen. So there's a lot of different causes. Best advice for stage four liver cancer. I mean, number one, it depends upon how advanced it is. If it's stage four, you're going to need to be in some kind of a clinic. You're going to be working with an oncologist and or a natural clinic. Um, you're going to need full kind of full support to address this because it's not like an early on thing and it can be really aggressive. Uh, number two is I don't know where you're at in regards to like root cause, right? Cancer has many root causes. So there's never a cure for cancer because there's so many root causes of it. Like, is there a stress issue? Is there a toxicity exposure? Is there just a lot of inflammation, poor diet, a lot of insulin? So it all depends upon what the causes are. So of course, you know, ketogenic paleo template really makes your digestion's good, stress good, all the toxicity stuff from all the lifestyle stuff has to be addressed. So you probably want to go and see a really good clinic to get that going. Um, there's clinics like Hippocrates is a big clinic. They're like kind of plant-based, which I don't love that, but initially it's a good first step. So I'd see a good clinic like Hippocrates to kind of get going first because you need a lot of support and a lot of help. Great questions, y'all. Does fixing your stomach acid help balance hormones out? It can because having enough stomach acid, if your digestion is poor, you can start breaking down a lot of these amino acids and nutrients, and then those nutrients help help run your detoxification systems better. So it definitely can. It may not be the fix, but it can definitely help. And it, it's a low-hanging fruit. Most people don't think about better digestion and better acid levels actually improving detoxification. They don't connect it. Can antiperspirant increase estrogen in men? It depends. I mean, a lot of times antiperspirants, they're just aluminum molecules that are dehydrated and they get into the pore and they hit water and they, they clog the pore. So it's definitely going to impair detoxification. I don't like it. I'm going to skip questions that aren't pertinent. Mm, I've been getting a lot of ankle cramps. I'm on keto. Maybe I'm not getting enough electrolytes. Yeah, definitely not enough electrolytes. Do some bone broth, add in some potassium and and Celtic or Redmond's Real Salt to have some extra minerals in there. That'll help a lot too with the cramping. For those who have high estradiol and weak adrenals, low cortisol, would it be possible that weak adrenals are driving estradiol or the other way around? Well, I mean, usually if you have stressed out adrenals, it's not going to be the adrenals that are driving estradiol. Usually the stressed out adrenals are going to be taking progesterone and converting it to cortisol. So, the adrenals will usually skew the ratio of progesterone to estrogen. Um, usually estrogens are going to estrogen be more, more produced from the ovaries with a cycling woman. You're going to get some production with DHEA, but adrenals are not going to usually overdo it. Usually hormones get depleted on the adrenal side unless it's acute cortisol stress. If it's chronic, then you start to see that cortisol drop. Can you speak to the purpose of licorice drops for high estradiol? Any side effects to watch for? Well, in men, I mean, if you're on chronic licorice, um, it just depends. I only keep people on licorice if we really see a depleted level of aldosterone and very low cortisol. So if not, we're not going to be on estradiol. We're not going to be on licorice that long for men. Um, but if not, I'm only going to give licorice that's non-deglycerized 
to people that have very low cortisol and that have a lot of symptoms of low aldosterone, a lot of the blood pressure stuff, a lot of the dizziness, a lot of the poor mineral uh, absorption, all of those are going to be things that I'm going to look at. Does eating flaxseed increase bad estrogen? So there's seed cycling and flax seeds can help modulate, bind up and kind of modulate estrogens. I think it's flax seed is the one for the first half of the cycle and then sesame seed for the second half of the cycle. I think it's flax and pumpkin first half and then sesame and sunflower the last half. That's what it is. Excellent. You are welcome. Glad you appreciate the feedback. Great questions, y'all. Very good. Making sure everyone got answered. Um, if questions aren't pertinent, I'm not going to answer it, y'all. I'm trying to keep it good to the topic here. Dust tends to make me sneeze. Does this mean there's a good chance I'm sensitive to mold? Hard to say. I mean, if you're just getting a lot of allergens in your body, that could be a problem. Do some good nasal flush. Try to have a good air filter to have good clean air exposure. That's important. Can a bone broth fast help with estrogen detoxification? It depends. I mean, you're not getting, I mean, you're getting some good nutrients in the bone broth, but if you're really going hypocaloric for too long, it probably won't help too much. I mean, it will help with your body's ability to recycle and cellular autophagy and things. But if you have systemic estrogen issues, you have to get to the root cause. So if the root cause is you're eating a lot of pesticides and junky foods and hormones and meat, it could help. If it's because of other issues with your hormones and poor detoxification and estrogen detox, estrogen issues because of progesterone dominance and stress, it may not be the root cause support. So it could be a good reset, but you have to get the nutrients in to run the detoxification pathways. And when you add foods back in, you have to make sure those aren't foods that are going to contain estrogens. So it's all about the root cause. You have to figure out why was the estrogen dominance there to begin with. That's important. All right, great questions, y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed today's chat. Uh, thumbs up, like, comments down below. Really appreciate it. If you want to dive in deeper with me here, links down below. You guys have an awesome weekend. Take care, y'all. Bye.